What's up guys, it's Captain Ash Productions 72 and welcome to my review of 75259 Snowspeeder 20th Anniversary Edition. So if you like the review, why not hit the like button and if you like what you see here, why not subscribe because I do video every Tuesday and Friday. So yeah, this is a cool set and this was when I was apprehensive to buy it first. Um, because I'll be honest, there was a few when they first came out, at least the pro preliminary pictures, like the unofficial pictures that were all blurry. This was one that I didn't like the look of. I also did not like the look of the one that's like the Kashyyyk set. They came with the 20th anniversary Darth Vader and I still don't like that. Like, I might buy the Vader from that set, but I will not buy the set, I don't think. I mean, it would be cool for my clone army, but I'm not going to buy it. So, this no speeder, obviously, is not the first no speeder. And out of all the 20th anniversary sets, this is the one I like most. At least for the the way they did, the way they did the set. Well, what I mean is like how close they got to the original. Like, because all the sets they did as part of the twentieth anniversary line were meant to be as close to the original set that they're based on, like as close as possible. So this snow speeder came really close because as the set exact same um, many figures, the amount of many figures, and it also has that little stand with the um, you know a turret. And I think they got that spot on because in other sets they included extra figures or didn't do them. For instance, Anakin's pod racer, I am almost certain, should have had a pit droid, but they didn't give a pit droid. The Slave 1 had extra many figures, which I'm not going to complain about. So I think that's one of the cooler ones, but this, this was probably the best in terms of being as close to the original as it possibly could. So I'm looking at the Lego Star Wars... Um, ultimate book here. Um, this is not the first snow speeder, like I said. There has been a few. The first one in 1999, which is this is the one this is closely based off of, at least the way they've done this set, like the mini figures and what you get in the set. Um, but yeah, there has been, now I'm only including play versions, so not UCS. I repeat, I am not including the UCS versions in this. So there has been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. So including this one that's in front of you, there's eight. But a few of them were included in different sets. Like for instance, um, the 2007 version um, was included as part of the Hoth Echo Base. Um, and 75098 was included in UCS Hoth and so on. So, craft. so two of these were included in sets of other things. The rest of them are standalone. There's two more versions that are UCS and also there's some microfighter versions. So today's video has something rare in it. I'm gonna do a brief comparison. So there's not many sets that I have more than one version of. Um which for many reasons some sets I don't want like different version of some sets I'm just happy to have one of. Um but I have the 2007 Snow Speeder from that Hoff Echo base, which I will show compared to this at some point during the video. Probably when I get onto that, we're going to do the minifigures, starting with the 20th anniversary Lando Calrissian. Then we're going to do the turret, then the snow speeder, then I'll show both snow speeders, do the box instructions, then we'll end the video. Um, I'm not going to show pictures of all those other um, snow speeders up on screen. I don't feel like it's necessary to do so. But yeah, we'll start with the minifigures. Here's Lando Calrissian. So, as it turns out, Lando does not work the best with my stand system because of his stand. So I'm just going to show him here, I'm going to twirl him around a few times like you guys see him, then I'll take him off the stand and I'll show him and his stand separately. I've never really had to review any of the um, 20th anniversary minifigures, at least with my new setup, because I've not reviewed a 20th anniversary set in like over a year, so this is going to be diff different, so I hope it doesn't fall off as you can see. It fits on the stand quite nicely, all of them have stands, and they can also be connected to other stands, which I will show all of the ones I have connected at some point in the video. We are near, we are over four minutes in, so I want to be quick. But yeah, here's him on the stand. Now I'm going to take him off the stand. So here he is without the stand. He looks exactly like the 2003 version, apart from the two differences. From what I hear, that brown colour that's used for his skin, like his head and hands, are a different shade of brown from that used in 2003. I think it's a newer brown. And obviously on the back of his torso, there is the 20th anniversary 1999 to 2019 logo on his back. But yeah, I'll show you what this bat looks like on the back soon. I've seen a lot of these being sold on eBay, marketed as the original versions, but they're not. Um, if you see one of these for listed and they don't show you the back or the capes covering it, then it's a clear indication that it's this version and not the 03 version. But yeah, it's a really common figure. It's a classic um, 
blaster. Now that cape, unlike the original, is not two pieces, it is one piece. The head and everything else is original, just the cape and the torso and the base. It's as close to the original per version as you can get, with some slight differences, obviously, because modern printing and stuff like that, but it looks quite cool. This one you could actually use, this one and Darth Vader you could use in mocks, because the back of their torsos are hidden by capes, so you don't see it. Now, here is that logo on the back. There's a logo, Lego Star Wars, so it's 20 years, I thought it said 1999 to 2019, but I've not lifted up the cape on this in a while, or I've not really messed around with my 20th anniversary minifigures for a while, they usually just sit on the shelf. They don't do much, but yeah, or I don't do much with them. But yeah, I'm just going to put that cape down, and uh, you cannot tell. Yeah, perfect. Um, love this minifigure, again, you could use this one in a Cloud City mock, but yeah. Love this, let's go on to his stand briefly, then we will get Luke Skywalker. So, to show the stand very briefly, it just says 20 years, Lego Star Wars 1999-2019, and it says Orlando Calrissian. Very basic, um, I will show you how it connects to the other stands near the end of the video, there it is. Now let's do Luke Skywalker, because we still have three minifigs to show. So this is your standard um, Luke Skywalker pilot, I don't think it was new in this set, I am not sure. He might be, I again don't know, but yeah. He's the most detailed version, obviously. Um, thankfully, he does not have that hideous helmet that was used in the 2018 X-Wing. Because when I first heard about this set, um, a couple months prior to its release, I thought, please, I was thinking, please do not use that helmet because it looked hideous. But you know what? I went back to the original helmet because it works perfectly. As you can see, the legs are covered in a lot of detail. The waist printing goes down to the torso. There's only a slight gap between that. You can see on the tubing, where I mean. Um, yeah, really really detailed, I really like it, the only thing that's missing is arm printing and foot printing, but I am loving what's going on here. Of course my favourite version will always be the 2006 version, because there's nostalgia for that. But yeah, his face is quite cool, I believe he has two face expressions, um, I'd be surprised if he didn't. But yeah, I'm just going to twirl him round after I zoom out and show you the back, we're nearly 10 minutes in here and we have not even showed this no speeder. No, um, Printing on the back of the legs, because I wouldn't expect them to do that, but yeah, I got the standard torso, not much there. The helmet, again, same mould we've had for 21 years, looks really cool. Got the Rebel Alliance logo on it, and all the Red 5 stuff, so let's cut the camera and show you his other face. So, something I forgot about this minifigure, um, if you turn his um, head around, you can kind of see the visor slightly, that's because it's supposed to be retracted up like that, which is I think is quite a cool fe feature because it's better than the plastic actually moulding it on because I like that, you can switch between, whereas the other helmet you wouldn't have been able to, so I think that's quite smart, I've got a standard blue lightsaber nothing special there now let's do Dak Rattler so I believe, and I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this version of Dak Rattler is the latest version really cool minifigure, he's been done in every single play version of the Snowspeeder except 2008 10. And I don't think he was in the 2016 one from UCS Hoff either. Um, but yeah, really cool. Again, same printing more or less as Oak Skywalker. There was no difference between the printing. The only printing difference is on the helmet and the head, but I'll still show him anyway. He's got a blaster pistol, and obviously because he's not a Jedi. And go back, you can kind of see the bottom half of his second face, which is slightly disappointing. And I think you can see that on Oak Skywalker as well. I only just realised on this particular minifigure. Now for his other head. And here is the other face, this is his worried, concerned face, it's probably the face he pulls before he gets um, shot in the movie, because um, yeah, that happens. You can't get me for a spoiler alert, it's a 40 year old movie, which is also convenient for me doing the set review, but yeah, really cool face, very concerned, very frightened. Now on to the final minifigure. So, of course he's probably not the um, best figure in the set, at least for most people. One cool thing about him is they gave him that retro Lego blaster, which... I can't think of any Lego figures um, that that really have it, apart from, I know Boba Fett had it. The original Boba Fett with kind of the square helmet, but that's about it. I know in the Lego Star Wars, the complete saga, most of the bounty hunters use that weapon, but it is really cool. So, no printing on the legs, you know, it's just standard, you know, Hoth Rebel Trooper, there's not really anything special about them. There's no double-sided face that I'm aware of, in fact, I will even take it off just to be sure. Yep, there is no double head. Oh! Normal backpack that we've had for about 10 years now, maybe longer. Those goggles can flip down, I'm not going to do that because they look hideous when that's done. But he's a really cool minifigure, you know, if you're looking just for some Hoth figures for a Rebel base, yeah, he does the job. 
really nice, got some grey hands. There's a slight bit of printing behind that backpack, but it's only like the belt. Now, onto the turret. Okay then, so here is the turret. It's on a kind of triangular piece, which you know was quite cool. Better than a square piece, if you ask me. So this can turn, it can go up and down, it can go do all sorts of things. It's really cool. That, unfortunately, that is a stud shooter, which it could have done without. I'm going to fire that at the camera now. Well, it landed back on the base point just over here. But yeah, you can reload that. You can also take it off, because personally, I do take it off um, while it's on display. But I put it back on, obviously, you know, review. I need to keep it as accurate as possible. Back here we have this piece, and I'm not actually sure what the purpose of that is. It's never really explained. I think that's just for the minifigure to hold on to as, like as some sort of control handle. Now, over here, we do have an area for the Rebel Trooper's blaster so that he can use this. I'm um, just going to place that on there and get the Rebel Trooper and put him onto this set. If it all let me. Now on the box it doesn't show you I'm doing this, but you know, this is probably the best you're going to be able to get it because of that control piece, but do you know what? That doesn't look half bad, I'm actually quite happy with the way that looks. It's a cool M turret, um, looks good next to any Hoff stuff, that's the cool thing about Lego Hoff, like anything space from Hoff, it all looks good to, good next to each other, there's no issues. Looks perfect, I keep it outside my echo base, works next to the turrets, or the, well, any other turret stuff I have. But yeah, let's go on to the snow speeder. So, the snow speeder, the thing you guys, all you guys came here to see. Or maybe you just wanted to see me ramble about the set. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, this is the wrong version. I wanted to trick you guys. So, mark the timestamp where you realise this isn't the right version. There's something wrong here. Ah, there it is, the 2019 version. But yeah, it's a really cool um, model. It's quite flimsy, like you can do this with the wings. There's um, no flick fire missiles apart from this one. I've not got the stud in it, but it works just like any other flick fire missile would. It's real. It's one of the more detailed versions, obviously being the most recent version. I think it's the most recent version. Anyway, I um, do not think we have had any more of these since the cockpit. Unfortunately, I am sure that is, a, is that a sticker. I actually can't remember. In fact, where's the sticker sheet? I have it right here. Actually, no, that is not a sticker. Surprisingly. I'm actually going to try, no I can't pick that, okay then, it's not a sticker, but yeah, it's got a sticker here, 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 I'm going to show you a sticker sheet at the end of this, oh yeah, that's supposed to go up to reveal um, control panels, the 2007 version did this better because the whole thing came out like a crank and like a car engine, um, same on this side, not much of a difference, again, open this up and you will have the controls. The back quite cool, you've got this harpoon cable which you use for the attacks. I've not really done a good job at tying this on, I'm not really good at these. Um, I did that to keep it secure because I've lost them in other sets, so yeah. You pull that out, goes around the leg of the at, -AT and you're in business. So I'm just going to cut the camera, wind that back up, and then I'll show you guys the cockpit. Okay then, despite that bit of string sticking at the back, I don't really norm normally see that because it's at the back of my shelf in my Hoff section, but yeah. So if you pull it forward, if I pull this forward, the cockpit opens, no this is not the one that opens two ways, I got confused with another model, but yeah. You can open up like that, singularly, this bit cannot open itself, the whole section comes out, and you got a nice little control panel in there, I'm going to zoom in and try, and try and show you at least. Yeah, you guys can see that control panel there, got some seating, um, got a control panel in here as well, it's just standard Lego control panel, it's a sticker, of course, got some... Good seating in there for minifigures, I'm going to put those in, in just a second, in fact I'm going to cut the camera and those will be in because I know I'm going to struggle with this somehow. So yeah, somehow getting those in there wasn't easy, their helmets refused to stay on, so you know, they fit in there quite nicely. Now there is like a stud thing there which I would normally you know, put Dax and um, Blaster in there, still there's no place or official place to look, put Luke Skywalker's lightsaber so you could kind of put it in there. Although if you were using this in a mock, I would not recommend because you would see it. So if you close this up, yeah, it looks quite good. You can kind of see Dak there at the back about to fire the harpoon cable. Um, but yeah, it's really nice. I like the look of this from the back. But yeah, it's quite a cool set. Now I'm going to show you guys the box um, and instructions, sticker sheet and stuff. Then we'll head on out because I know this has been a long one. Okay then, so I apologise for any background noise. There's a bird outside making a lot of noise. I'm keeping my window open because it's warm in here, but yeah, so here's the box, just you know, the standard box. 
Got um, 7 plus, 7 5, 2 9 5, 25 anniversary snow speedo. Got some, you know, nice Hoff or very reminiscent of the original um, set. Got 25 anniversary Orlando from 2003. He's the same age as me. That many figure, 20, 20 years. Got a top Lando. Got some, you know, just a normal box stuff. Um, again, these boxes are styled like the Kenner toys from the 1970s and 80s. Now let's go on the back. So on the back, it just shows you, well, basically what I showed you, apart from the flick missiles, um, I'm going to show those when I compare the two, which will be in a, in a moment. So you've got all the 20th anniversary minifigures there, that just shows you how they line up, I'm not going to show you that part. There is the box there for the original set from 1999, here's some more of that. And we are done the box, so let's compare the two before we do the instructions. So the first notable difference you can see is 2019 is longer and has a lot more pieces. Um, if you're wondering why 2007 is small, it's designed to fit through the doors of Hoff, Hoff Echo Base. I think that's the same set. Uh, the set's number is 7666. It's designed to sit, you know, it's supposed to go through that um, opening door, so that's why it's so small. Also, 2019, you're able to take the liberties and make it a bit bigger. Um, just show you guys the top of both sets. Year 2007, year 2000. 19, obviously not as many stickers on this one, a lot more stickers, I'm just going to show them from the back. Uh, 2019 has a nicer back, back end to be honest, out of the two. Um, 2007 does not have any missiles or stud shooters on the bottom. This one does, but I removed them because I don't like them at all, they look bad as display pieces. Now onto the instructions. So here we have the instructions, but first I'm going to show you the sticker sheet for this. Yeah, a hell of a lot of stickers came in this set, like a lot of them. I didn't count, but you guys can see there's a lot. So here's the instructions, just the same as the box, got that Lego thing they're telling you to scan stuff. Open up the instructions, you got that whole 20 years ago. I forgot that these instructions are special. Um, but yeah, here is the 1999 snow speaker. With, it has 212 pieces. This modern one has 309 pieces, which is the one you're watching a review of. Um, but yeah, they've improved the design and stuff. That's just some info and... Yeah, here's all the other 20th anniversary sets. Now, I have reviewed all of them, apart from the Darth Vader collectible minifigure from 75261, because I don't have the set. Um, again, here's the set that you're watching a review of. Yeah, and it has some stuff from in the movie, so you can see some art from the film, which is kind of cool, which is, obviously they're not going to print that and put it in the normal instructions, but it would be cool if they did. So yeah, I'm just going to cut the camera and go to the instructions and show you how much pages there is. So having gone through the instructions, there's 110 pages and there uh, and up to 108 of those are building and there's 102 steps with obviously there's sub steps in between. And at the back of the instructions, you won't find much. There's, I don't think there's any extra art. No, there's not any extra art. Now, on to the conclusion. So, my final conclusion on 75259 Snowspeeder 20th Anniversary Edition. It's uh, probably my second favourite of the uh, 20th Anniversary sets. The first being the Slave 1, which I reviewed last year when it came out. The reason I didn't review this one is it's kind of been on the backlog, if you might make sense of things that I was going to review and stuff, because obviously lately I've reviewed the 501st Battle Pack, I did the Duel on Mustafa and stuff, so this one kind of came a bit late because I wanted to review those like brand new 2020 sets that I got. I have had this set for nearly a year, I got this for Christmas 2019, so that's why I didn't review it when I did the rest. As for the, I, I think this will be the last 20th anniversary set I review, unless I go out and get any of the other ones. So my final opinion is a brilliant set, 10 out of 10, it has everything I would want from a snow speeder, apart from one thing. Despite this one thing, I'm still giving it 10 out of 10. It does not have a snow trooper. Now the original set didn't have one, so that's why it still gets its 10 out of 10. 20th anniversary minifigure. I'd say there was a good choice, it was a bit, a little bit random with their choices, some of them didn't make sense. But again, they didn't have to. The Lando was quite cool. Um, Choice for this set, like I'm happy to redo of him, because the original one is really expensive. So for those who can't get that, they can get him in this set, just even though he's slightly different. But cape hides the difference, so it's fine. As for standalone snow speeders, um, the one I showed you, other one is not a standalone. It comes in a set which you can pay quite a bit of money to get now. But 
there are, there's other standalone snow speeders 1999, 2004, 2014. There's quite a few of them, like standalone versions, that you can pick from, including this one. Uh, I don't know what the prices are going for because I don't think this is being sold anymore. Someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. This might not be in retail anymore. I don't know. But yeah, I don't imagine it would be cheap to get once it's out of circulation because I've seen some other 20th anniversary sets go up quite a bit. But yeah, final conclusion, 10 out of 10. I love this set. Um, coming this week on Figure Friday, which is our next video, I am doing the 2005 episode 3 Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Ultimate Space Battle, and I think he was also in the Grievous Chase set. That video coming Friday, thanks for watching, like, comment, and subscribe. We are five subscribers away from 500, which means I'm doing my room tour next week, so I would like to make those one video. Um, Because remember, I said I'd show my face if I got that many subscribers, so I would encourage you to continue finding subscribers and stuff, because if I hit 500 by the room tour, I'm showing my face in that same video. Thanks for watching, like, comment and subscribe. See you in Friday's video. Bye.